strong to severe storms likely to come this afternoon heading in towards this evening. See how your day is going to be planned here in the DMV. This morning on DC News Now, a string of shootings across the DMV this weekend. The latest on police investigations. And a minimum wage increase coming for workers in Montgomery County. Why some say the pay bump will help save money. Plus millions taking to the roads and the skies for the 4th of July holiday. How people in the DMV are preparing. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Haley Mylon. We're going to get to those top stories in just a few minutes. But first, we've got to get you set for your Sunday. It is a DMV first warn day. So Derek Bowen is standing by to get us ready with what we can expect. Derek, it's going to be a little ugly out today, especially towards this afternoon, right after brunch today. That is when we're going to see uh, the impacts of severe weather coming into the district. We're looking at, of course, cloudy skies throughout most of the day. We're seeing temperatures into the 80s this morning and eventually rising up into the 90s closer to lunchtime. We're going to start to see those that chance of showers as well as thunderstorms to roll into the region as we head towards the one or the, the 12 to one o'clock hour today. Currently nothing much going on. We have a few sprinkles here and there in and across Baltimore, even around the DC Beltway and just outside of it at least down into orange County, Virginia, also seeing a few little sprinkles here and there. Uh, the most impact weather that we're seeing currently is all off towards the east, uh, towards Dover, as well as uh, southern New Jersey, uh, seeing some uh, some showers and storms all below uh, severe limits. But as we head throughout the day, we're going to see more and more impacts of severe weather once we head in towards the afternoon. We have a dew point of 74 right now, which has me quite concerned about the impacts of the weather as we head today. Thankfully, though, we do have overcast skies and also a south south westerly wind at five miles per hour. So we do have some things going in our favor, but we also have a very potent cold front as well, which is going to send temperatures tomorrow morning down into the 50s and 60s. Oh, that's going to feel chilly. Thank you, Derek. Montgomery County is issuing a hyperthermia alert for today. That's when the county, uh, the heat index is above 95 degrees. So this alert will be in place from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Officials urging people to take extra precautions, including staying indoors, avoiding strenuous activity, as well as alcohol and caffeine, drinking lots of water, and watching children and elderly as they're the most at risk for heat-related illnesses. Our other top story this morning, a string of shootings and violence overnight. DC police is investigating four separate shootings and one stabbing all across the district. Police say there's a shooting investigation ongoing on Banks Place Northeast and in an unrelated event, another shooting investigation on R Street in Southeast. There, police are searching for a black sedan last seen headed down Texas Avenue. Police are also investigating a stabbing on Minnesota Avenue near Global Citizens Public Charter School. Again, these are all active investigations and we're going to bring you the latest as it comes into the newsroom. And new details, Alexandra police say that a man was killed in an overnight shooting at One Life Fitness. APD says one of the men involved died at the hospital from his injuries and the other man, the alleged shooter, was in critical condition at last check. Reports came in for the shooting at the intersection of Hoff's Run Drive and Eisenhower Avenue just before 5 p.m. On scene, officials found two men who'd been shot. Both were taken to the hospital for their injuries, but police say there's no active threat to the public public at this time. Meantime, Maryland officials bonding yesterday, calling out the recent gun violence in Prince George's County. Local, state and federal leaders hosting the Take Back the Park event at Strom Hills Park. That is where a massive shoot, a mass shooting at a senior skip day event left five teens hurt. That was back in April. Officials using the tragedy to call for change. Of, the, of our need to try and focus on addressing this problem at all levels, you know, where state, local, and federal, and at the community level as well. We have to prevent people from wanting to pick up a gun in the first place. We will send a message through our prosecution that it is unacceptable and that we will hold them fully accountable for their actions. Two boys, a 14 and a 16 year old, have been charged as adults with attempted first degree murder in connection to the shooting. 
And many people in the district are reacting to the U.S. Surgeon General declaring gun violence a public health crisis. That announcement was driven by data showing a growing number of injuries and deaths by guns. People in the district telling us they're glad it's finally being addressed. Long overdue. Long overdue. We live in it. Uh, I'm still getting calls from mothers who lost all of their children. Yes, all of their children. I mean, every day, every minute, this, as we talk with someone's been sh Meanwhile, D.C. police say violent crime is down 28% from this time last year. The Supreme Court upended a 40-year-old decision that made it easier for the federal government to regulate the environment, public health, and pu workplace safety. Earlier in the week, a 6-3 decision, conservative justices overturning the decision, commonly known as Chevron. The Chevron decision says agencies should be allowed to fill in the details where laws are not clear. Those who oppose that decision say it gives too much power to the experts who work for the government. People across the DMV are preparing to travel for the upcoming 4th of July holiday, and AAA is predicting just about 71 million people in the U.S. will travel over the holiday. That's a 5% increase compared to 2023, and an 8% increase over 2019. DC News Now's Dave Laval joins us from Reagan National Airport with more. Saturday remained pretty much steady at Reagan National Airport. The TSA predicts 5.5% more people will travel by air this 4th of July compared to a year ago. It was packed when we was leaving, good Lord God. That's why Tina Johnson and her family flew home Saturday to Upper Marlboro, Maryland from Orlando, Florida. I not want to be bothered with the crowds and the hype and the crowded places. Airports are expected to be packed with plenty of 4th of July travelers. The TSA predicts it will screen more than 32 million passengers over the long holiday. That started June 27th and ends July 8th. Count Rockville's Pedro Caba among them. I'm going to Florida first, and then from there I'm going to head to uh, Dominican Republic. He's also traveling internationally. Tickets to fly around the U.S. over the holiday average $800, according to AAA. But that's 2% cheaper from a year ago. Crowds picked up throughout the day. No problem, though, for Orlando's Rebecca Barton. She arrived nearly five hours early. Because I like to be on time for my flight, and you never know what's going to happen during the weekend. So. Have a good evening. Tina Johnson has reason to smile. She and her family made it home ahead of the crowds. You're reminded to get to the airport at least two hours before your flight leaves. At Reagan National Airport, Dave Laval, DC News Now. Dave, thank you. And here's an idea of how busy outbound highways already are. If you're headed to the beach, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge saw well over 70,000 drivers on average daily and 241 on south uh, I-95 in Springfield, Virginia, and on I-270 in Gaithersburg, over 200,000. Yesterday, D.C. officials say the Anacostia River Splash event had to be canceled due to water quality concerns. And this comes after officials say water samples taken Friday showed high levels of E. coli. The event would have been the first time in over 50 years people could have legally swam in the Anacostia. The event is postponed until July 13th. And this comes after Virginia health officials say 23 people contracted E. coli last month after swimming at Lake Anna in Virginia. Two more people also contracted the bacteria after having close contact with someone who'd been in the water. State officials say they're unsure of what caused the breakout during Memorial Day weekend, adding that it's tricky, if not impossible, to definitively detect where the bacteria came from. Probably one of those scenarios where there was a perfect storm of elements, literally a storm, I think, that which preceded Memorial Day. So there was a rain event, um, a lot of activity because it was a holiday weekend. So more people were probably in the water. If you were in Lake Anna during Memorial Day weekend or any time since and you've experienced any sort of stomach bug or pain, experts recommend contacting your local health department. All right, Derek, it's not going to be a swimming day this afternoon, so not a whole lot of temptation to expose yourself to that. Not much in the way so of showers and storms when lightning or when thunder 
when thunder roars go indoors. It's going to be that type of day today. We we're quiet this morning seeing those cloudy skies, but it is very sticky out there. We're seeing temperatures into the 70s and 80s at this time, and some heat index values at the moment are into the upper 80s and lower 90s. We're going to see temperatures, air temperatures get up into the 90s by by midday, and then we're going to see those that shower, those showers and thunderstorms begin to move into the area.